Hello and welcome to my knitting podcast. I am Jessica McDonald. I'm a knitting pattern designer and I am coming to you from a small town in the mountains of Idaho. Today is Friday, February 26th, on which I am recording this, 2021, if you are way in the future when you are watching this. Um, I'm gonna try to have this up overnight tonight, so hopefully you'll be watching this tomorrow. Today is February 26th. It is sunny outside and still snow everywhere, but next week we're going to have above freezing temperatures, so it's gonna just be wet and gross, honestly. The ground is still frozen, so when the snow melts, then you just have standing water until the ground thaws out, and then you just have mud. So March is kind of a garbage month, in my opinion, because it's just wet and nasty and cold, and it gets really, really windy here. So anyway, <laughs> there's, there's my thoughts on the weather. So I have just released my pattern, that I, the sweater that I'm wearing. Snowberry is its name. Let me get my hair out of the way so you can see it in all of its glory. Um, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you get 20% off. 20% um, off of all of my new patterns. If you are just a general um, audience, I guess, everybody else in the world gets 15% off. So that's one good reason to be on my newsletter list. So you get a better discount just as a thank you for letting me have space in your inbox. So let me talk about Snowberry. Uh, last episode I had part of a sleeve left to do. You can see I've got two sleeves now. So it's also my first finished object. So I'm sitting down close to the camera. I don't know if I'll be able to show you very well. Move back. There we go. You can see it there. So this is Snowberry. It's got cables and baubles along these front panels. My favorite part is this front edge. Let me make sure that's focused. Last time I had a bit of issues with the focusing, so I'm gonna to try to keep a better eye on it this time. This front edge here, this cable on the edge, is my favorite part. I am so pleased with it. It looks so nice. And this cardigan is designed to just be worn open and just lay alongside, just straight down alongside. It's not supposed to close. So I wanted to do something fancy with the edge instead of just ribbing. And this cable is beautiful, just beautiful. And these baubles are made using the double crochet method. I've got a tutorial for that also on my YouTube channel. So if you wanted to learn a new way to do baubles or see how I've done it in this pattern, you can pop to my tutorial section and see how I made those baubles. So it's very easy, it's very quick. You know how when you're making knitted baubles, you gotta knit and then turn it around and knit and turn it around and knit. There's none of that with a double crochet bobble. It's really quick, it's really easy. And if you forget to put a bobble in somewhere, you can just drop down to that stitch and put your bobble in after and nobody will ever know. I did that a couple times. Because <laughs> sometimes you just, Knitting along, <laughs> you forget. So this is Snowberry. It is still on its discount. Um, hopefully you'll be watching this tomorrow, which will be the 27th. The discount ends the 28th. If you use the code SNOWBERRY, all one word, all caps, you'll get 15% off the pattern, both on Ravelry and my website. And I'll put links to that in the description box below so you can easily find it. So Snowberry uses the top-down contiguous set and sleeve method, which I told you about before. So you increase on either side of the shoulder line out to the edge, and then you increase for the sleeve cap. I have recorded a whole video on how that construction method works. So if you'd like to learn more about the top-down contiguous set and sleeve and how this pattern comes together, you can go on my YouTube channel to my pattern details playlist, and it will be in there. Um, I can also put a link to it down below. I don't want to bore everyone who doesn't want to hear about it again because I did talk about it in my last podcast. So if this is new to you and you haven't seen that before, you can hop over to my pattern details playlist and hear all about it. I have also recorded a video on how to choose your best size for this sweater. 
Since it is the top down contiguous set and sleeve method, you want a really good fit in the shoulders. You don't want to have it, you know, it doesn't need to close around your chest, your full chest. It needs to fit really well on the shoulders. So I recorded a whole video on how to choose your best size. And long story short, I want you to use your upper best bust measurement, which is immediately under your armpits, and go based off of that measurement and choose the size that is closest to that measurement or go down a size if you're in between and you're not sure. So choosing the correct size is really important, otherwise your shoulders will be too big and your arms, sleeves will be too big. So um, I've recorded three, three video resources for this um, pattern, the bobble tutorial, the choosing your size, and the construction method details videos. So if you'd like to watch those, those are available to anyone. You don't have to buy the pattern to watch them. You can just go watch them if you want to and see all the details about this sweater. And if you're making it, that should help you along your way so that you get a good result in the end. So, yes, this is Snowberry. I'm wearing it over a collared shirt. I wanted to show off another way to wear it because this was, I did design it for Laren. Obviously it's open in the front. You're not gonna wear it without something underneath. But I wanted to show how it looks with a collared shirt uh, underneath it because in my pictures I wore it over top of my dress and this one I wanted to wear it a little bit differently so you can see how it looks worn a little bit differently. So yes, this is Snowberry. Let me tell you about the yarn. Um, this yarn is from Bare Naked Wools. It's their Stone Soup DK. This was done in collaboration with them. And this was the first time I've ever used their yarn and it's really nice. It's really nice. I threw away the yarn tags. I never do that. But anyway, I'm gonna read to you what it's made, made up of. It is a unique blend of Rambouillet, Columbia, Lincoln, Navajo Churro, Alpaca, Silk, Bamboo, Tensile, Bison, and Llama, which offers exotic color, tweedy texture, and crisp stitch definition. This fiber blend is 95% produced and entirely spun in America. So it does have really nice stitch definition for the cables. It looks really nice in cables. And then it's also a little bit heathered and a little bit tweedy. I'm gonna try to, hang on, let me get that focused. You can see it's heathered, it's a little bit tweedy. It's got little, like little nuts of soft fiber in there. There's one which makes for a really interesting look and texture when it's just on the stockinette portions. Come on, focus on my face. On the stockinette portions, it looks really nice and it also looks really good in the cables. That stitch definition is amazing. It's got a really gentle halo to it too, which gives it a really soft look. And I really like it. It's really nice. It's really soft. It's really warm. It's really, really lightweight. And it is, it is really warm. In my pictures, my final, photo shoot for all the pictures. We took it standing around in a snowstorm and I did not freeze my behind off. So this yarn is really nice. I highly recommend it. So this is Bare Naked Wools Stone Soup DK. If you don't know about Bare Naked Wools, um, they produce yarn that is chemical free and dye free. So their whole goal is to make it as natural and eco-friendly as possible. So they do different blends of yarn and they just do their colors based off of the natural colors of the fiber as it came off the sheep or alpaca or whatever animal it's from. So if you haven't checked out Bare Naked Wools, you can check out their website. I'll put a link to that in the description box below because it is really nice the yarn and it's produced in a really environmentally friendly way. It's also a small woman owned business that operates in the United States, which are businesses that I really like to support. So. Snowberry in Bare Naked Wools. That's my new release and my first FO of this podcast. I need to drink. Next, I'm going to show you another FO, but technically you've already seen it. The only thing I've done is put on the buttons. Buttons on it now. This is Alpen Glow. If you notice peanut butter, just ignore it. I tried to clean it off with a baby wipe, didn't work very well. Um, so yeah, I sewed the buttons on. How I do the buttons um, is I just use the yarn. I don't use thread, I just use the yarn. You can see that it's actual yarn from the sweater and I put it through and then I tie a knot in the back 
which you can't see because I've done it so well, but anyway, there's a little knot right there. And then I weave in the ends so that it uses the same yarn as the sweater and it's securely fastened on. So that's how I do my buttons. These buttons are from Pearl Soho. If you are like me, you cannot find buttons. It's so hard to find buttons. The only resources I have are a Joann's and a Michael's an hour and a half away from me to find buttons. And I didn't want to do just, you know, you can buy white plastic buttons or clear plastic buttons, some basic wood buttons. They don't have a huge selection. And I didn't, I didn't really want that. But these are from Pearl Soho and they have these plain buttons in a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different sizes. On their website so that's where I got them from I believe this is the cream color and this is a three-quarter inch button so I thought that was pretty awesome so if you're trying to find buttons look at Pearl Soho for their buttons because I thought that was pretty fantastic they look pretty nice so I used a three-quarter inch size button which I think works really well I did have a test center say they thought a one inch button would work better um, I think it depends on the yarn that you use I used a wool yarn that blooms nicely and puffs up, so that means my buttonhole is a little bit smaller because the yarn is kind of filling in that hole a little bit. So if you used a smoother yarn than I did, you might might fit a one inch. It would probably fit, but a three quarter inch works beautifully on mine. Um, this sweater will be out on March 19th. My test measures are mostly done, but I'm not planning to just release it early because I still need to finish off the pattern and edit the pictures. And There's still some work for me to do and I don't want to try to rush to get through that. So this will be out March 19th. Um, I recommend that you use a wool yarn in it. I had some test knitters use different fibers. Some to use cotton, some to use a tensile blend, and they just don't work as well for these drop stitch these drop stitches because you want it to puff up nicely let me focus it again you want it to puff up nicely and you can see it looks really really nice in this yarn which is this is Quince and Co Puffin by the way and it looks really nice in this yarn it puffs up nicely and that drop stitch just kind of fills out really well but if you used a different kind of yarn that didn't fill out your drop chain stitches um, it, they would look kind of loose and there'd be big holes in the middle. I had a test knitter just take yarn and duplicate stitch over them to kind of fatten them up and that worked really well. You couldn't tell the difference and then you didn't have any, I don't know, scrawny, scrawny braids there. So I do recommend a wool yarn, a non-superwash wool yarn. If you think I'm crazy for recommending non-superwash wool yarn for a children's sweater you can go read my blog post all about the topic and learn why exactly I strongly prefer non-superwash wool for children. Um, that's on my blog on my website. I'll put a link down below. My uh, website is jessicamcdonalddesigns.com so hopefully that's fairly easy to remember. So there's Glow. This one will be out March 19th. And that is the end of my finished objects. Oh, it, if you hear noise in the background, my kids are watching We Can Be Heroes. I think it's called We Can Be Heroes. It's the movie where the adult superheroes are all captured and their kids have to save the world. So that's what they're watching while I do this. Next up, works in progress. I had meant to have this one done already, but I have not gotten it done. I'm planning to finish it today. I just have to, oh, I'm dropping stitches. I just have to finish the collar. Let me put these on the right needle again. I just have to finish the collar and weave in the ends and then I'm done with it. I'm in the middle of the short rows. So it's like the worst possible place to be to show it off. So, I have decided on a name for this one. I showed this one to you last time, I believe, just, just brand new and started. This one will be called Tamarack. It is going to be in my Woodland Ramble collection, and I'm going to name them all after trees. So this one is named Tamarack. So the Tamaracks 
are a conifer tree that lives in the forest of Idaho and the unique thing about a tamarack is it loses its leaves in the fall. It loses its needles. It loses its needles, I guess, since it's a conifer. It loses its needles in the fall, so they turn bright yellow. There aren't any here in this part of Idaho where I live. They're generally in the northern part of Idaho. But I thought that would be a good name for this one. So this one is Tamarack. You can see I'm right in the middle of the shawl collar. So it looks very attractive. <laughs> this, this is Durerum Natura Gilead, which is the worsted weight version. And this is the colorway Caramel. It is a warm, rich, kind of nutty brown with some orangish undertones to it. It doesn't, it's showing up pretty well right now. But when I hold it up and it gets more light on it, it kind of fades the color out. But it looks, it looks more like this in real life versus this, that's too light. Yeah, anyway, so picked a nice color for myself to have to photograph. This one is I'm making for Jimmy. I've got four kids. I'm making four sweaters, so each of them get um, one of the sweaters from the collection. So this is Jimmy's. And um, it is a shawl collar cardigan with broken rib stitch texture. You can see that. Let me make sure you can, make sure it's focused on that. There we go. It makes this really nice dimpling texture, but it's really easy to work. It's just knits and pearls. Nothing complicated, nothing hard. It's got a nice, pretty um, raglan line there. I've designed it so you come out of your raglan line and then flow right into your pattern on your body. You can see I've still got the hole in the underarm. I'll close that up when I'm finishing. It's also got a uh, all along the front edge. It's a column of knit stitches all along that front edge, which makes it look really nice. It just gives it a little touch of finesse. Things people would probably never notice. <laughs> um, but I think it looks really nice. So this one is almost done. Um, I'm in the middle of the short rows, so it's going to be shawl collar. I'm going to put buttons on it. If you didn't want to put buttons on it, you could just skip the buttonholes. But it's just one by one rib, shawl collar. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to show you with it, with the needle in the middle of the collar, and it's kind of bunched up. But anyway, this is um, Tamarack. Almost done. I'm planning to finish it today, maybe if Aiden is still napping when I'm done um, recording this podcast, I'll be able to finish it up because it won't take long to finish. I'm, I'm about halfway through the short rows and then I just have to finish it and it's only going to be an inch deep in this size, so there's not a whole lot left to do. I've kind of scaled the shawl collar for the sizes, so 2, 4, and 6 get a smaller collar than 8, 10, and 12. So, um, hopefully that looks nicer on the, on the different size kids because uh, this, if you put the same size collar on a two-year-old as a 12-year-old, it's just, it's either going to be way too big on the two-year-old or way too small on the 12-year-old. So, I'm doing different size collars. It's just, you know, a, a bigger collar on the different sizes. So, hopefully that will look a lot better. I'm only making one size, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out in testing. Um, test knitting, so I'll be able to see more sizes then. So, I'll show you the back too. All broken rib stitch. So, make sure I don't lose more stitches. There is one of my FOs. That will soon, not FOs, one of my whips that will soon be an FO. Push that over there and show you my other work in progress. Um, I'm gonna take a second here and stop my camera and restart it. So my camera only records in 20 minute intervals. I know a lot of people use their phone to record podcasts, but I don't know how that works and I know how my camera works, so I'm not really interested in trying to learn a whole a whole new way to do this right now. So I'm just have to pause it after 20 minutes and restart it. So 
Hopefully that doesn't bother you too much, but all of a sudden I noticed I only had a few seconds <laughs> of recording left. So, my next, my next whip. So this one is being done in collaboration with Shibui Knits, and I asked them to send me their summer yarns because it's coming on to summer. And so this one is made out of reed, which is their linen, fingering weight linen yarn. Um, I'm through the lace hem. This one is being knit bottom up. As you can see, I'm through the lace hem. Linen does not have very good stitch definition, so this lace is not going to look as crisp as if it was knit up in um, wool yarn, but it still looks very pretty. It's very simple and very graceful, and has these little soft scallops in the bottom, which aren't really showing up right now. Like here's one right here. It just softly, gently curves each repeat, um, which will make a really pretty effect at the bottom of the hem. So it's going to have this lace hem, which the lace is now all done, so it's, what, two and a half inches of lace. So it has the lace hem, and then I'm going to do short rows to drop the back of the hem, and then it's going to be a boxy fit. Well, I'm about to lose stitches. That's going to be a boxy fit, which is a little, um, little tiny cuff to make it a short sleeve tee. This is going to be coming out, I'm planning June right now, or we coming out in June. So through the lace hem, just have to do the short rows and then it's a big chunk of stockinette before I get to the top. Oh, I am losing stitches before I get to the top. This is my very first time knitting with um, a plant fiber. Usually I only knit with wool, so this is a new experience for me. And it's kind of hard on my hands because there's no stretch in it. It's just very sturdy, very strong. Absolutely no bounce to it. So it kind of hurts my hands a little bit if I knit on it too long. So how I'm doing it is I just knit on it in the morning, in the early morning. It's my early morning knit. And then um, the rest of the day I knit on whatever I've got going on in wool. So I knit on it a little bit every day and it doesn't... It doesn't hurt my hands really bad if I do it that way. If I tried to knit on it for the entire day, it would just absolutely kill my hands. But little by little, it, it doesn't hurt, and it's um, knitting up really nicely. And I think it's gonna be a really fantastic garment. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, one of the things that I found out is it's really hard to tension the linen. So generally, when I tension my yarn, I put it once around my pinky and then over my Pointer finger, that's how I tension my yarn. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit closer, I guess. Um, so it goes around my pinky, then over my index finger. But with the linen, since it's so slippery and thin, I just do it twice around my pinky and then over my index finger, and that gives me enough tension that I'm able to knit with it comfortably without feeling like I'm losing my yarn. Anyway, I'm very excited for this one. Um, I think it's gonna be really fantastic to have a summer knit because most of my knits are uh, very winter friendly. Even my fingering weight sweaters are still wool, so you wouldn't want to wear that in the summer. So I'm really excited to have an actual summer knit that I can wear in the warmer months. So this one's coming right along. I think I'm going to crop it. I haven't white made up my mind and I don't have to finalize that decision for a while yet because I have at least, I don't know, six inches to go before the underarm, even if I am cropping it. So I'm thinking I might crop it because it would look really, really cute worn over top of a dress or a high-waisted skirt is what I'm thinking. So I was thinking I could um, crop it and have it hit right about my belly button, the hem right about my belly button, or my natural waist, probably a little lower than my natural waist. And then I could throw it over top of skirts and dresses and it would look really pretty. But if I want to wear it with shorts, then I will want to have it longer. So I have to make up my mind. I'm being a bit indecisive on this. I'm going to include instructions in the pattern for either length direction, or directions for either length 
Anyway, I just have to decide how big or how long I want to make mine. So I have to decide how I want to wear it so I know how to, how long to knit to, so. But I have a while before I need to make that decision, that final decision, probably a week or so, maybe a couple weeks before I get there. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what I, we'll see what I decide. Um, yeah, so that's my last work in progress. Not, not a ton of stuff. Last time I had a ton of stuff to show off to you, but this time I don't. Um, my next pattern I'm going to write is um, Brenda's sweater for the Woodland Ramble collection, which I've got the swatch for it here. It will be made out of Durera Natura Elise, which is the sport weight version. This is the colorway Cedar, which is a stunning, stunning green. I, I love green and this is gorgeous, but I'm not going to use this. Hers is going to be made out of gray yarn which she complained about already. She wants it to be pink. She loves pink and everything has to be pink. So she's getting gray and she's gonna complain about it. But I have pink yarn for her that I'm planning to make her a pink sweater later in the year after I do my Woodland Ramble sweaters. So hopefully that will make her happy. But anyway, her sweater is going to be made out of gray yarn, which I think is awesome. I love gray. Five-year-olds. So this is the swatch for Brenna's. It's got this, this will be the center panel, and then it's got a um, moss stitch and another cable over here, and then block stitch. Um, so it's going to be a bottom-up boxy fitting sweater. So. Um, yeah, I've been considering changing up this cable. I flip-flop on it all the time. This cable is supposed to go up the shoulder. This will be up the center. This is like my sixth or possibly seventh swatch that I made for this design. I mean, I just kept messing around with the center panel, changing the cables. It was too wide, it was too narrow, it didn't stand out enough. So I think it looks nice now. I want to be careful not to make it too big, because then it will just look kind of bulky on them. Too small just looks scrawny. Find the perfect balance between the two, so. And I, yeah, I mess around with this cable too. I might change it still. I haven't written the pattern yet, I might change it still. I don't know, it looks nice. It does look really nice, but I might change it. Which I can do, because I haven't written the pattern yet. I don't know, we'll see. This is a really nice yarn too. It's really lightweight and lofty. It's really soft. It doesn't have the best stitch definition. Like the Juliet that I'm making Tamarack out of, has really, really good stitch definition. Like you can see these pearl stitches and the broken rib just really pop. It has really nice stitch, defini stitch definition, but the Ulysse is softer. And so the stitches look a little more blurred. Um, which, that's up to you. Which I think is fine. If you use a rounder yarn for this sweater, it would the stitches would all pop a lot more and the texture would stand out a lot better, but I think it's going to look really nice. Anyway, I am planning to make Aiden's sweater out of Ulysse and it's going to be color work. And I think that this yarn is going to be amazing for color work, absolutely amazing for color work. Um, I still have one color that I'm going to use in his that is out of stock, so I'm going to wait till that comes back in stock before I can make his. It's this one. I'm gonna, I need one skein of caramel and you least to make Aiden's sweater. But I have all the rest. But I have all the yarn for Brenna's, so hers is going to be next. So hopefully by the time I film the next podcast, I will have this one done, hopefully. Um, and we'll see what cable I went with. <laughs>
for the shoulder one. So you can see my to-do list back here. I got all organized the first week of the year. I just sat down and got all organized. I'm like, all I have to do is stick to it. I just have to do it and I am already behind. So <laughs> this sweater needs to be finished by the end of March, by the time I record another podcast, which will be later in March. Um, it needs to be done, otherwise I am going to be going to be way, way, way behind, and then I won't be able to make my self-imposed deadline, which it's my deadline. I could change it if I wanted to. I could publish this collection, this book, next year if I wanted to, but I want to do it this fall, so I'm going to try to try to get back on track and get it done, which I have four small children. Aiden took a month to cut two molars. It's just life, you know, life happens. So I'm not going to be able to just focus solely on this. A woman whose children are older or in daycare or doesn't have children would have a lot more time to do this and would be able to just crank this out, no problem. But I have different life circumstances, so I'm not about to hire a nanny or put my children into daycare because to put four children into childcare would be unaffordably expensive. Oh, I could afford it, I guess, technically, since I make money from this, but then I would just be paying daycare all of my money, which you may or may not care about hearing, but I've I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom anyway. I have no desire to put my kids into childcare. I want to, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. So it's really nice that I can do this job and run this business from home with my kids still here at home and just kind of plug along little by little and build my business and create my designs, which I am always thrilled whenever somebody buys one of my patterns. I'm really, really happy that you think they're beautiful too. So that took a bit of a turn. That was a bit of a ramble. Bit off topic, talking about children. Um, well, I think that's everything I have to talk to you about today. I'm not gonna talk your ear off about social media this time. So, Anyway, that's all I'm going to show you. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, I will put a link in the description box below so you can sign up to that. There'll be links to everything else I've talked about. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to be alerted to all of my new podcasts. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye!